Have you ever stood by a river and watched a massive chunk of road slowly lift into the sky, only to reveal a quiet boat passing underneath? There's something almost theatrical about it. Steel rising, traffic pausing, watercraft gliding through like they own the moment. That's the magic of a drawbridge. But behind that graceful motion lies a world of engineering that's far more complex than it appears. In today's video, we're diving deep figuratively into the mechanics behind drawbridges. How do they work? What types exist? And how does something so heavy move with such precision? Let's raise the bridge on this topic right here on History of Simple Things. A drawbridge, in its simplest form, is a bridge that can be moved to allow passage, typically for boats, beneath it. You'll mostly find them in places where roads and waterways intersect, especially in areas where building a tall stationary bridge just isn't practical. The concept of a movable bridge goes back centuries. Medieval castles had them, wooden platforms that could be lifted to keep invaders out. But modern drawbridges? They're feats of engineering designed not for defense, but for smooth transportation and adaptability. You might wonder, why not just build a bridge high enough that boats can pass under it? Great question. In many cases, that would mean miles of elevated roadway, which is costly and intrusive, especially in dense urban areas. Movable bridges offer a solution that balances land traffic with waterway access. They're also efficient. Boats don't have to wait for high tide, and drivers don't have to take long detours. As long as the timing is managed well, everyone wins. Now let's talk about the main types of drawbridges. There are several different styles, each with its own mechanical approach, but they all serve the same purpose, to temporarily open up the roadway and let vessels pass. Bascule bridges. This is the most common type of drawbridge. Bascule is a French word meaning seesaw, and that's pretty much how they work. Picture a bridge deck split in the middle. When a boat needs to pass, one or both sides tilt upward, rotating around a pivot point. To do this efficiently, bascule bridges use massive counterweights, often hidden below the road surface or inside towers, to balance the weight of the moving parts. That way, the motor only has to overcome inertia and friction, not the full weight of the bridge. Vertical Lift Bridges In this design, the entire span of the bridge moves straight up and down, like an elevator for roads. Instead of tilting, the deck stays level as it's raised by towers on either side, using cables, pulleys, and counterweights. These are especially useful for places where space is tight and there's no room to swing a large bridge segment upward. They're also capable of supporting heavier loads than bascule bridges. Swing bridges. Imagine the bridge deck rotating horizontally, like a turntable. That's a swing bridge. It pivots around a central point, often a pier in the middle of the water, and swings out of the way to allow boats to pass. While swing bridges are simpler in design, they require a lot of room on either side of the pivot point. Plus, their central support can obstruct larger ships, which is why they're more common on narrower waterways. Let's zoom in on the mechanics, literally what's going on under the hood when a drawbridge moves. It all starts with motors. Whether it's a bascule bridge or vertical lift, motors, typically electric, provide the force to move the structure. These motors are usually connected to gearboxes that control the speed and torque. For bascule bridges, the motor engages a gear system that turns the bridge leaf upward. Meanwhile, a counterweight swings in the opposite direction, perfectly balancing the motion. This is critical because it means the motor doesn't need to lift the entire bridge, just enough to get it moving. 
Vertical lift bridges operate with massive steel cables that run from the bridge deck to counterweights inside the towers. When the motor activates, it reels in or releases the cable, raising or lowering the bridge accordingly. Pulleys at the top of the towers help guide the cables and reduce mechanical stress. Swing bridges use large turning mechanisms, often hydraulic or electric, to rotate the bridge around its pivot. Locking mechanisms hold the bridge securely in place when closed and release it when it's time to rotate. Counterweights are the unsung heroes of drawbridge design. They're not just giant hunks of metal for show. In a well-balanced system, a counterweight can make a 1,000-ton bridge feel like it weighs next to nothing. That balance reduces strain on the motors and gear systems and makes the bridge operate smoothly and safely. Typically made of steel or concrete, counterweights are strategically placed so their movement offsets the weight of the bridge leaf or deck. In some cases, they even move in visible sync. When the bridge goes up, the weight goes down, and vice versa. Let's not forget safety. Drawbridges support tons of moving weight and must interact seamlessly with traffic, both on the road and in the water. Sensors and computer systems monitor every aspect of the bridge's operation, speed, position, tension in cables, and more. If something's off, the system halts movement immediately. Barriers come down well before the bridge begins to open, often accompanied by flashing lights and bells. In many modern bridges, operators have full visibility via cameras and control panels, so they can monitor both road and water traffic before initiating any movement. Drawbridge technology has come a long way. Today, automation plays a big role. Bridges can be operated remotely, and some use artificial intelligence to analyze traffic flow and schedule openings with minimal disruption. Materials have also improved. Lighter, stronger alloys reduce the need for giant motors, and sensors provide real-time feedback on wear and tear, allowing for predictive maintenance rather than emergency repairs. Some cities are even integrating drawbridges into smart infrastructure grids, coordinating them with streetlights, traffic signals, and public transit to optimize urban mobility. To the average person, a drawbridge is just an occasional inconvenience or a fleeting spectacle. But now that you know what's really going on, beneath the asphalt, inside the towers, through the pulleys and gears, you can appreciate just how impressive these structures are. They're not just bridges, they're machines. Machines that move tons of steel with grace, coordinate land and sea travel, and adapt to the environment with stunning precision. So next time you find yourself stuck at a raised drawbridge, don't just groan and check your watch. Look up. You're witnessing centuries of engineering evolution in action, where balance, force, and design come together to move something massive with elegance and purpose. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.